getting hurt sucks and it's no fun when you get hurt and you can't do the normal things that you take for granted in life, like maybe even just walking or feeding yourself or bathing yourself, let alone working out and exercising and taking care of uh, your fitness and your health, right? So in this video, we have a special guest, T-Hop from down in El Paso, Texas. She's a really good friend of uh, mine for quite some time now. She's a personal trainer and she actually just got hurt. And we were talking about, let's do a video about how to be smart uh, if you want to recover uh, from injuries moving forward. So uh, that's what we're going to talk about tonight on Chavez Live 360, brought to you by Live Masters, where we feel alive by going live. And your journey to video mastery begins here. If you don't know who I am, again, Mike Chavez here in the fabulous city of Las Vegas. And I go live every day and I've gone live daily for um, four and a half years with videos to connect and meet amazing people like my friend T Hop. And um, I help and specialize with helping people step out of their comfort zone, get in front of the camera and network online. So um, Teresa, Hi. Uh, again, is a trainer. She's down in El Paso, Texas. And uh, Teresa, tell everybody what happened and uh, to you recently <laughs> and why we're talking about recovery. We can see her, I can see her crutches back there. Yeah, well, the whole ironic thing about the whole thing is this happened on April 1st. So it was a no fools joke for me. And I was actually teaching a TRX class and um, it was a TRX cardio. So we have blocks of cardio in with it. So it's an interval going back and forth from the TRX and adding cardio moves on the TRX and off the TRX. And um, I was just doing simple with the TRX with the straps underneath and my arms on the outside grips, uh, just mountain climbers and um, it was weird because I don't know if you've ever taken one of those like brown lunch lunch bags and blown it up and popped it. That's mm -hmm. what we heard. Everybody heard a pop. It was loud. We were like, what is that? And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? I think it's me. And it was me. And uh, after having the MRI that evening, um, we come to realize that um, my Achilles tendon was completely ruptured and um, knew that then from there, I was probably going to have to go through surgery to repair it. I knew that it was not a great injury. I know it's a long process and I'm still going through the process. So I had surgery on the 11th and um, just went today, got my cast off that they had on me and uh, I'm in a big boot, but I still can't put any weight bearing on it for three more weeks. I can't even swim laps in a pool with a buoy between my legs, meaning that when you're swimming laps, you're using all your upper body instead of kicking in the water with that buoy. And um, that's where I'm at, that's what happened. It was really bizarre, it was freaky. It was something that I normally do. I wasn't doing anything crazy, like, you know, or training or competing in anything. And, you know, here I am. So it was completely unexpected. And this is the thing, when you get injured, it's always unexpected. Um, it's always when you're at, when you're top dog, when you're feeling great, when you feel like you're in the best shape of your life, when you're everything's going great and boom, there's that roadblock that just comes and it came to me as an injury. So that's what happened. Yeah. These, the injuries. Yeah. Like you said, it's a adversity. Where's that's opportunity for growth. I mean, you know, I guess what, what's the old saying, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Right. I mean, yeah. And you don't know how strong you are until it's the only choice you got. Exactly. You know, and and you really have to sit and realize, you know, and I'll tell you right now, when you're in that situation, the biggest thing and the hardest thing to do, I think, actually, is accepting it, you know, and you have to accept that where you're at and you have to give yourself some grace, some kindness and compassion. And you have to really just take a look at the injury, take a look where you're at and then come up with a game plan on how you're going to get through it and how you're going to get through it positively how you're going to get through it, maintaining your fitness level and your, you know, and, you know, maintaining just that positive mind too. You know, that's the biggest thing right there is, 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 uh, defeating it with, you know, your mind power or getting yeah. through it with your mind power. Absolutely. Cause it could be very depressing not being able to do the things you normally do or be incapacitated in a, any certain way. 
Oh where yeah. You have, where you have to rely on other people. Yeah. Or if right? you can't even get around, I, it's very difficult for me to get around right now because I can't put any weight on it. So I've got three more weeks of that on crutches and even just maneuvering, you know, Hey Jackie, how are you? Thanks for popping on. And so um, that's where I'm at. And like I said, it's crazy because even like today, just going out, I dreaded going out, but um, I took a shower and my shower set up where I've got my little seat in my shower and thank God I can have my little shower thing come down because I can't stand in the shower and I'm afraid to stand in the shower, even if I'm just on one leg, you know, cause that's not the best environment to be in if there's water and soap. So I make sure I'm sitting, sitting and I'm, that's three more weeks of sitting in the shower, but just doing that and doing my hair and doing that, even that little bit made me feel a little bit happier about the day or made me feel good about myself, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Julie, Julie's tuning in. Uh, she's our Facebook friend. And she- Hey, Julie. She, yeah, she hurt her What's leg. She, she tore her leg up pretty bad. And now she actually, she put in the comments that so she just walked today. So yeah, it's, you know, it's painful. I mean, um, now you, you've, you've been through this before. It's not your first rodeo. You've had injuries before where you've come back, right? Yeah. From other things in your life. And, you know, I have too there's been a lot of different things that, that I've physically overcome, you know, and yeah. uh, it definitely, it definitely um, can make, it makes you stronger. I mean, it, I think it's a miracle I, that I'm still alive. Number one, I just thank God, you know, I know. And that's another thing too, is like, you know, putting your faith in the Lord and, and praying and knowing that he's there to help you through it is a big factor too. You know, I really do believe that. And I tell you what, it's, it, it, it puts your mind at ease when when you need it to be at ease because it can be stressful. I get all stressed out. I can't do anything. I'm a, I like to do stuff. I like to get out. I like to get things done. I like to, you know, it's even hard like to maintain my house right now. And so that's been difficult. And um, one thing that I've learned that I think, you know, everybody needs to understand is that, you know, when you do get hurt, you know, you got to give yourself some grace. You've got to learn to be able to ask for help, especially, you know, for me, it's very hard for me to ask for help, right? So the first thing I think when you first initially get injured is just, you know, allowing yourself permission to ask people for help, to ask the, and get those people around you that w are gonna help you and that are gonna keep you upbeat. You know, the same thing as in business, right? You, you wanna be around like-minded people. You wanna be around people that, you know, are positive people in your life and motivating and inspiring. And the same thing when you're injured, it doesn't change. If you want to relate it, we can relate it to business and, and um, being injured is that it's that same concept. You want those type of people around you and you can't be afraid to ask for help either, even in business, right? When you don't know something or, you know, to be around people that have been through it, um, it's always something that I think is an important thing to do because it keeps you yeah. upbeat and it keeps you yeah. moving forward and it keeps your, your, your mind thinking more positive and having more positive thoughts and all that stuff. So, yeah, I think, I think the hardest ones for me were this like surgeries. I had to have multiple surgeries. Well, the injuries that I got was the biggest ones were when I got in a motorcycle accident and I broke both my arms, had a compound fracture on this arm and it's all that's kind of funky and then this elbow right here is prosthetic so there's titanium in here that's not even real that was their motorcycle accident i got two broken arms and you were talking about helping you know asking for help how about this you know i was oh geez i was like 39 at the time when this happened or 40 yeah i was like 30 i think i was like 40 no 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 i was like i was like 39 yeah i was like 39 anyways I got two broken arms and on this on this arm I got a cast up to here and then on this arm I got a cast right to here right so I could move this arm so now I have to eat with my left hand and I can't do anything with this one cuz it's like this so I got then I got to take a shower right and then it's like uh, I feel like a yeah like the Pillsbury doughboy er, 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 right you know like I just was out there and my son you know he had to, he <laughs> He was embarrassed, but he helped me. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, you do think like, it's funny when you're, when, when you go through the things that you have to do, my son's the self of me too. Like, you know, just for my first shower, he had to help get my bag over my leg and tape it. And, you know, we had to put saran wrap and then tape because couldn't get anything wet yet. So at least now I'm in a boot and I swear the boot feels like 50, 50 pounds, but you know, it's, purpose of this is just to know that people are there and they want to help and it's okay to ask for help. And yeah. um, it's important to be able to, to, to allow yourself permission to do that. Because it seems like, you know, I had a tendency to want to just try to do it myself, but then mm -hmm. that makes it even harder. And then I could even put myself in a situation that, you know, isn't going to help my injury. You know, I could actually, you know, do something that, you know, might not be the smartest thing. Like, put pressure on it or fall or anything like that. So, you know, asking for help is one of the biggest important things. Hey, Julie, yeah. what's going on? Oh yeah, I said, yeah, 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 the boot. I know, you know what, Julie, it feels like it's 50 pounds too. I don't know what it is, it's crazy. I don't know if anybody can see it, but it, I, I have it up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's go. massive. And, I was like, and the only good thing is, is at least I can take it off. Like I had it off when I was sitting on the couch and my foot was elevated and I actually iced, I was icing and I wasn't moving. So it's, it's just a relief right now. And I'm just so thankful and grateful that I can actually do that to have that little break of it, not being in something. So right. thankfully I have that or that I can be removed now that I can actually take a shower without having to put a bag on it, you know, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and uh, you know, my biggest thing, I think my biggest fear, and I think most people are, especially when you're very active or an athlete, or if, if you're a trainer, if that's just a part of your life every day, you know, that's a love of my life. It's something I love, love to do, to work out. It just makes me feel good. It's just, I've been doing it for so long that it's very hard. And I think I was telling Mike, I think I said, I'm having, <laughs> you know, natural endorphins withdrawal, you know, it was like, oh, yeah. it's very hard. And so um, that that's been the hardest part. So my biggest thing too, that we're talking about is, you know, how can you still kind of maintain, you know, where you're a little bit of activity. So for me, I can do upper body. So that's what I do. You know, I can do push ups and I've been doing push ups. I can still do my pull ups. Um, I can still do abdominals and I can still do, you know, some isometrics. I can do Pilates, you know, I can do the hundred and I can do roll ups and I can do all those and I can stretch. And so, you know, finding that balance too of things that you can do and still, you know, keeping yourself doing that has been really important. Um, I can't even swim in a pool yet. So I thought maybe I was going to be able to do that yet, but I can't, but, um, I have like till May 24th is my next appointment. So that's still, it's a long ways to not be able to do anything, you know, in a, is a, in a means of getting around better walking, mm -hmm. you know, I can't walk for, you know, another almost a month and I never imagined that this was going to happen. So. Does that does natural endorphins withdrawal? Is that real? Does that correlate with PPD as well? What I don't know what PPD is. Uh, is that per personality persistent disorder? Is that anything? Oh, like I don't. That? All I know is, is definitely that, there is definitely something absolutely. to exercise. Listen, when when you start exercising and and you and you eat super clean and you eat the right way, and your body's creating this incredible stuff what it can do when you do the right things you would be surprised you really sh you yeah well yeah because endorphins are like you know it's a chemical reaction a natural mm -hmm. chemical reaction in your body that actually elevates you know your feel good your feel good feelings and your positive mind frame so yeah absolutely because as when we work out our body naturally releases those endorphins so our body is used to getting those endorphins so mm -hmm. i would have to say you know, I'm not a doctor or anything, but I would have to say, yeah, because I can't release those endorphins like I did, whether if it was through cardio or weight training. Um, I mean, weight training, I can, if I, if I can do the upper body, but like not to the intensity or what my body's been used to getting. So that's been 
a thing that I always say, you know, natural, you know, endorphins are like that natural antidepressant, you know, yeah. it's instead of taking, you know, and that's what I say, a lot of people that feel down, you know, or, or, or struggle with depression, there's so many studies mm -hmm. out there that have shown that working out helps that because it is that release of our chemical endorphins. And um, right. so I do think they play a big part of just being active. You know, people mm -hmm. who work out tend to be happier, able to, you know, deal with stress. It helps keep our cortisone levels down because we don't want those cortisone levels high, um, which is our stress hormone, you know. So all those things is, you know, I do think it has a play in a lot of it in, in our mind, more so than what we really realize. That's true. Yeah. Well, also, too, you were talking about endorphins being natural. And I think that part of the deal is I could, because listen, I had all these surgeries, and every time I had surgery, I, I got on, of course, antibiotics, right? I got mm -hmm. on um, the painkillers. When I had, I had two back surgeries in, in a two year span, right? And during that two years, I was on Oxycontin, I was on opiates for those two years because the pain was incredible in my back. And it 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 tore it tore me up like I mean that stuff isn't is bad not to mention the other medication or the drugs they were giving me like a drug called Neurontin which is supposed to because I had really bad sciatica and they had to fuse my L five S one I have lots of nerve damage yada 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 so they give you this stuff called Neurontin and what it does it's supposed to do it's supposed to like basically deaden the nerves so they don't feel irritated so you don't feel pain as much but the problem is that the side effects from that stuff is really bad for your your brain because that's your brain is just the bundle of neurons and it definitely affects your memory and um, all kinds of stuff so it makes you feel like foggy and or, or, or and it also I think this is me that I find because I try to get off it as quickly as possible because I agree. I think that, you know, those things, you know, they, they alter our chemical balance. Right. And it also, um, kind of makes you feel, you know, that you're lagging. I lost my train of thought. Dang it. And it was really good. That's okay. Darn it. No, I didn't, <laughs> but if I lose my train of thought, I'm going to tell everybody. Cause I'm like, wait, you'll get, you know, that's you'll what I do. But no, it, you know, they also, you know, I don't think people realize how much that it it affects you, mm -hmm. and you know it 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 can. So, you know, I try to get off them as soon as possible because you know it's just the first day or and the second day, and I haven't been on them. Like I won't take them during the day. Usually, when I'm on by my third day, yeah. and um, not only that, they cause constipation. They they. Um, make you cranky, they alter your mood, all that kind of stuff are things that they do. And, you know, I think that we don't realize that we we are born with everything really that our body needs, right? When it comes to things like that. And so also what I try to do is stay away from things that um, are, you know, cause inflammation. So I don't eat dairy hardly any to begin with. I like cheese and I eat it every now and then, but I don't eat it on a regular basis, but anything else, you know, I don't drink milk or anything like that and, or yogurt or anything, you know, um, Greek yogurt every now and then and stuff like that. But I, I try to eat clean regardless, whether if I was injured or not. And I do think that has a play because, you know, think about what we eat is how we feel. So if we eat bad stuff, we're going to feel bad, but if we eat good stuff, then we're going to feel good. And, you know, that's just the way it is. I stay away from preservatives, GMOs, gluten as much as, you know, I don't eat a lot of gluten either. Anything that is just inflammation in general. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that those are some things that I think correlate with, you know, since we're talking about, you know, painkillers and stuff, it's what we put into our body. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I just try to get was, my the, mind yeah, off, the off of something. Huh? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the opiates they 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 really mess up your digestive system. For they well, do. Uh, they screw up your gut health. This they yeah. just it's like a it's like a grenade <laughs> for your gut health. And then yeah. not only not only that it 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 slows down the process of the natural peristalsis of your intestines pushing food through. 
It does. So, and, 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 and it's just, it's so bad for you. And yeah. so listen, you know, really at the end of the day is eating. That's why I decided when I decided to eat a plant-based diet and eat just a whole food plant-based diet and only eat at certain times of the day, that's when all the inflammation went away. Yeah. I know that rhymed. I didn't mean it to rhyme, but it's true. Yeah. Well, think and about it. That's how our bodies, like, that's how we've been kind of programmed. When, you know, even if you go back to, you know, how we evolved. I mean, we didn't eat for days, right? Because you had to go hunt, get food, right? So our bodies are used to, we fasted and they would eat and then they might not get the next meal until the next day. And it could be, you know, a 24 hour period. It could be 10 hour period, but that's how our bodies basically, you know, we weren't designed to eat like three meals a day. No. You know, we were, you know, and we were, you know, we ate very fibrous diets and, you know, and protein too. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, I don't know if they realize that, you know, even like the whole, you know, snacking through the day, um, that works for people too, but we weren't really designed to do that either. Like eat no. little snacks throughout the day because they weren't available. You know, mm -hmm. you had to go find them and it took a while to do that. So mm -hmm. that's basically, you know, and we moved around a lot more, you know, even moving around, even if I'm on crutches, my biggest thing is I got it. I do have to move around. It's, mm -hmm. it's not easy, but you know, you got to keep your body moving too, because if you're, if you're not, if you're just sedentary, then that also plays a lot of part on like our, it slows down our digestive tract and how mm -hmm. our body systems work and, you know, how we feel up here and everything like that as well. You know? Yeah, exactly. You know, and yeah. I'm taking good supplements. You know, I take good things for my body too, mm -hmm. you know, that I, that I know too, um, that are good for me, you know? So yeah. speaking of that, I'm going to, Drop a little, a little plug, <laughs> Whoa, a little plug. plug, a little plug for our DNA plug. nutrition. A little plug, actually. Here's this, plug. Is, this here's a little plug for our um, uh, our DNA nutrition, and we're we're talking about injuries and stuff like that. And I had a lot of injuries from basketball, and uh, this is a DNA wellness report that I got that is specifically for sports and fitness. That tells you about your body, which you inherited from your parents when it comes to exercise and ligaments and muscle recovery and stamina for your muscles and all that good stuff. And i tell you what, I've, I have about five different reports. This is just one of them. And I learned a lot from this report because growing up, we played a lot of basketball and um, that's really high impact type stuff. Guess what? I blew my knees out. I had multiple surgeries on my knee. That's one of the reasons why I had to have my left knee replaced. And that, that, a knee replacement is gnarly. Okay. So you're just the bionic man here, right? With the knee yeah, replacement. <laughs> Listen, it's a, it's a thing when I go through the airport sometimes. It really is. Oh, I uh, got uh, it. So they, it's, getting an MRI. Yeah. They go in and they cut the top part of your knee off. And they cut the bottom part off and they take the old stuff out. And then they drill holes in there and then they put this, you know, the metal in there, like these long spikes in your bone. And then they put it on the bottom and then they put it together and they actually it's not that bad. The scar's not that bad. But you know, I, I was telling you before we came here that after that knee surgery and that knee replacement, they had me up out of bed walking on a full knee replacement, the same within with less than 24 hours. Yeah. And and, no, go ahead. Well, and that, and that's the thing about, I wanted to touch on too, about recovering from, you know, surgeries or um, injuries or anything like that. You have to have a plan of how you're going to recover. And the doctors told me when I had my knee replacement, that if I didn't do the physical therapy, right. And it didn't heal right. And there was too much scar tissue on the tendons, right. Um, I mean, if I didn't move it enough and I didn't do the physical training right, that he's had to in the past um, go back in and re-break people's knees because of the scar tissue. I was like, oh no, that's not going to happen to me. And as painful as as painful as the rehab is, you got to do it. You got to put that work in so you can recover the right way. And anything that anytime that you get hurt, so. Oh yeah, your, and I think which, that's the hardest part. Like for me, this one because like my knee surgeries were different because. It was the same thing. They get you up right away to get the blood moving, you know, and to get get you moving. This has been completely different because I can't put weight on it. So it's been completely different. And the last time that happened, like the first time 
I actually ever was on crutches was in fourth grade because I was a gymnast. So I, I was on crutches and in the cast then. And I developed this thing called Osgood Slaughters. They, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called the football knee. A lot of athletes get it. And so um, they, they had to cast me. And so um, that was the first time. But this I've is- I've never heard of that before. Because, what's, the, what's the deal on that? i never heard that before. Osgood Slaughters. So what, is it, what does it do? It's like you. a bump on your knee. It's like this, I don't know, you can see it. It's, it's very painful, especially when you're growing. So I've got this extra kind of like calcified bone bump on my knee. And, um, and it's the knee I've had surgery on. So since there, I've had bone spurs. I've had to get my a lateral release of my tendon because of my, you know, and tightening of my ACL. Thank God that, you know, I didn't blow my ACL. But that was the harder surgery. And I think, too, with this, like, it, it is weird because, you know, they they want you moving. I mean, they want me to do stuff, right? I can do upper body. I can sit on a bike, a stationary bike, actually, and just, like, can you imagine me sitting on a stationary bike just cycling with one leg? <laughs> they said I could. And if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be me. So I'll be there doing that. But, you know, it's – it's um this has been the hardest because I, I can't put the weight on it. And so it's, it is excruciating. And I know PT is going to be excruciating, but I was the same way with you with PT. Like, you know, I remember going through PT with my knee. They're like, you're the best PT patient. I said, well, yeah. I said, you know, this is, you know, nobody wants to come. They call and, you know, cancel their appointments. And, you know, and I don't know if you've ever been there, but, you know, if you have or if you're going through PT, look at it in a positive. Be excited to go. It's a workout for you because it is. It's a workout. And, um, you know, I I did my exercises at home and I told the doctor, I'll be your best patient. It's going to be painful for me. I'm going to have a lot of come to Jesus moments because I'm going to have to tell myself, Teresa, you have to go through the process. You have to be patient. You can't let yourself get like this. And, um, but I, I will listen because I want to get back to where I was, where I can, you know, do it. And, you know, like I said, the biggest thing that I'm going to be doing to maintain my fitness level is to eat right, to hydrate, drink lots of water, to eat clean, to, um, to, to do intermittent fasting, to um, doing my upper body, doing my push-ups, doing my, you know, doing those things because, you know, that gives me a peace of mind that I'm, you know, not just going to say just sitting there and not doing anything that will keep me alert, that will keep me focused, that will keep me um, present, <laughs> you know, and, um, and I will, I will be, you know, the best PT patient. <laughs> <laughs> client yeah. and hopefully I'll learn you know and I always go to because it always you know this sounds crazy but being a personal trainer you know the offer you know going through PT I actually learn a lot I learn a lot from you know the, the therapist because I love talking to them I love talking to them about the body I love talking to them about muscles about you know all this stuff and and it helps me learn even because some of this stuff I can take in and use with clients even though it's PT, you you do learn different things, and I know it's for an injury, but it's it you know I look at it as it's also going to be a learning experience for me too. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm so, glad that we did. I'm glad we did this video because me too. No, I mean, there's there's a lot of people that get hurt. There's a lot of people that um, that can't are having a hard time moving right now because of physical limitations that they have. Um, and you know, I've, I've been there <laughs> like seriously when, I mean, I got, like I said, I got, I've gotten all the way up to 340 pounds before in, in the, well, actually during this last four years on video. Right. And so a lot of the reasons I gained a lot of the weight is because I wasn't eating right. And I was still like, my body was still trying to recover from years of all that stuff happening to it. Then why I wasn't taking care of my body and eating the right way. And it takes a toll on you, man. You know, the older you get, the 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 older I get, the more motivated I am to take better care of myself because I don't want to feel yucky. I don't want to feel bad. I want to be able to wake up in the morning and just jump out of bed and 
like let's do this you know and it that for the first time in since in my 20 early 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 20s that's how i feel every morning when i wake up now yeah and you know that's why i'm glad that we're doing this because you know if we if i can do that have this kind of transformation and you can come back from this kind of deal you know the achilles just to let people know the achilles tendon is one of the most painful things that you could rupture or you know hurt and the the name achilles came from a trojan warrior oh, right achilles and this guy was the baddest warrior nothing could stop him and he was all armored up he had one spot on his whole like body that was open to the arrows and he got an arrow and his achilles, achilles tendon which is you know if you're not familiar with it the bottom of your heel that comes up and attaches to your leg that big thick ligament back there an arrow went right through there and that took achilles down so that's why the saying that your achilles heel right that's where that comes from from him mm -hmm. and yeah. uh remember when i when um if anybody's ever seen kobe bryant he snapped his during a game on a play and then walked to the bench walked back and made two free throws with the torn achilles it's crazy hard yeah it's like one of the worst i think it's one of the hardest things to come back from you know from what i know i think it's the largest tendon in your body and it just controls your whole upper body you know your you achilles well your calf and if that doesn't do anything then you can't really you know what i'm saying like like i could not like i i could not move my foot well also too during world yeah. war II, during world war ii the pow's to keep the prisoners of war from running away they, they sliced their, their achilles tendons so they couldn't run away yeah and i wanted to tell you too i'm really glad we did this too because i needed to do this too for myself to get out because i've been having a hard time just getting online because this past week's been tough because i had my surgery the 11th so for the first couple days I just, I wasn't, I, I was out of it. And um, this weekend I felt like there was like two days I was just felt like, I don't know if I did too much, if I was just up too much, but my foot just kept swelling like crazy. So literally for Friday, Saturday, and most of Sunday, I was in bed and I, with my foot, you know, elevated. And I just really told myself, I said, Teresa, you have to just let yourself just have a couple days of nothing of no movement of nothing. And um, this has helped me to be able to get back on. And so I really appreciate you, Mike, giving me the opportunity and inviting me to do this because it's truly helped me the most right now, just because I know too, I got three weeks of not being able to do anything. And it's actually, I think longer than three weeks when my appointment is. But. Hey, well, you've been going live on your page, right? Every day with since you got home. Have you been going I live? didn't. I, I haven't gone like since I had the surgery and I did like a couple. I mean, I didn't want to get on there like being on the painkillers. Okay. Like, All right. So here's the deal, Teresa. Here's the deal. Yes. Everyone's going to go to your page. And Thank you, Jackie. Everyone's going to go to your page. If they're not your friend, they're going to send you a friend request that's watching. Because yeah. you're going to start going live now and let everybody know how you're doing and your recovery. Yes. 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 This is, Yes. I did do a couple lives on my journey, so I'm going to do that because I have the whole journey. Like, I, I have a long way to go, so I'm going to go ahead and document it. And, you know, maybe if it will help anybody that's going through the same thing, that they know they're not going through it by themselves and that they can always, you know, stop by and, you know, get a positive video or, you know, add something, you know, add some value to that my page to help somebody else as well. You know, any tips of what they do. Um, I've been painting, so that's really good. So I painted, um, I don't know if I can. I can Is that your paint back off. there? Did you paint, the, did you paint that flower, the blue one? Not while I was out, but I just did. I don't know if you guys can see, let me see. I did those for my friend's nursery. So I got to get them framed now. So I did two of those. So I'm doing things that maybe I haven't put my mind to. And, and there's things that I've put on the back burner. So I'm, I'm doing those things. So always think of what is it something that maybe you haven't putting a lot of 
attention to or that you kind of let go of, whether if it's writing a book or starting a journal, um, you know, starting to keep track of what you do put into your body, right? Start to keep track of, um, you know, the supplements or how you're eating, what how your workouts are, um, you know, come by too, I'll give tips and, uh, you know, of things that I'm doing and uh, any new exercises that I learn, I'm always looking for new things and different ways to do things and, you know, changing things up. Um, but do something that you haven't had time to do. Yeah. And, you, know? you know, that's the cool thing too about exercise. There's, there, there's just, there's so many different things that you could do. I mean, you don't even need a gym. I mean, like you, you use your imagination. There's just, that's the fun part about it. Really, if you start to use your imagination, that's what's really fun about being able to take care of yourself. Because I think of it like a game now. I want to just learn as much as I can and mm -hmm. just do everything right because it's fun. Because I feel great. So, yeah. yeah. And I don't think I can walk on my hands, but I'm going to be, I think I can do some headstands. So maybe those that uh, want to learn how to walk on their hands, we can start with some handstands. Head, headstands, I mean. Okay. So someone said they're going to start out. It's a good time to start a vision board for their one-year goal. That's cool. Yeah, that's a great idea. That yeah. is awesome. Totally. You know, anything like, you know, sometimes I, you know, writing down your blueprint. How do you want your life to look? You know, that's what your vision board is. How do you want your life to look, you know? And, mm. you know, start envisioning it. Start manifesting it. Start meditating. You know, I can still meditate at least. I can still, you know, do those things and put my mind, you know, at ease, find ways to put myself at ease and, you know, stay centered, staying balanced, right? Um, all those fun things. But yeah, if I do any paintings, I'll, I'll post them. I'll post these paintings. They're really cute. All right, cool. Well, yeah. listen, we're, we're streaming this live on my personal page. We're streaming this live in Live Masters. And this is also on our YouTube channel. So um, just wanted to throw that out there. And, um, you know, Teresa, thanks for coming. I mean, thanks yeah, for I, asking. I, yeah. It's, I met, hey, we haven't done this in a while, and it was like time. Yeah. We, we <laughs> used to, Teresa and I go way back. I mean, we do. Uh, she's been in our my group Live Masters for a while. We partnered up in, in some business stuff, too. And we've done all kinds of videos. Um, and it's been fun. We haven't done a video for a long time. And, you know, I always ask everybody if they're interested in doing videos and networking online using videos to come check out Live Masters. So always uh, Live Masters is our closed group where we have video topics and resources to help people connect on video. And that's how I met Teresa, really. I'm just doing videos and her and I become really, really good friends over yeah. the years. Like I can say that now, like we become good friends over the years. And you know, the craziest part still, Teresa, is we still have not met each other in person. It's like, I know. Right? Isn't that nuts? Yeah. So, but it's all going to happen. Um, so yeah, cool. Right on, Teresa. Yes. We'll definitely be well, We'll be doing, by the time then, we'll be doing pull-ups together. Yeah, I gotta get on the pull up. I gotta get on the pull up train for sure. You get on those pull ups. Yes, I will. <laughs> Again, thank you for for tuning in, everybody. Yes, listen, thanks everybody, everybody so much. Everybody so that watched this video, like, thank you so much for tuning in and sharing your stories. Like, if you're gonna come back and watch us in the replay, I know it's a long video. We yeah. did talk about a lot of. But here's the cool thing: we did talk about a lot of different stuff, and we, did. we just kind of told our stories about how, you know, it's totally possible to overcome these things and be better than you were before. Check Absolutely. that out, right? So it doesn't matter what you're going through. It's what you can do now to be better than you were before these things happen. These injuries happen. Every single time I've ever had a serious injury from my motorcycle accident to my knee replacement, to my back surgeries, to losing all this weight and everything, I've always been better than I was before. And that's what true i think to me is my 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 definition of happiness is being better and better and better and i know it's just helping people so and it's a growing period and we grow <laughs> and you're allowing yourself to grow and expand absolutely absolutely this so, is so and hopefully fun. people had fun and just enjoyed and hopefully they got a couple laughs because i don't know yeah this is this is the i think we're pretty funny looking so <laughs> 
this is the longest videos I've done in a long time. But this I is know. totally us. So, you know, it's funny. I mean, we're we're obviously we're live and we have uh, people watching, and we get to put their comments up there and everything. But uh, it, it really it is just like us having a conversation, and our amazing friends are watching right now. And we get to include them into this. And again, thank you all for watching. Yes, thank you, everyone. So appreciate it. You've been doing everybody. a million things, but you're here watching us. And uh, we hope we added some value to you. So good night. Yep. Living stay life stay together. And stay healthy. Stay Nobody healthy. cares about your health as much as you. All right. Good night, everybody. Peace out.